This is the very first book to be written about the genetic history of Britain and Ireland using DNA as its main source of information. It is the culmination of an ambition, almost a dream, that I first had ten years ago. Having successfully used DNA to solve several outstanding issues about the human past on a continental scale, I wanted to push the method to its limits and dissect the intimate genetic makeup of a smaller region. And where better to do this than in my own backyard, so to speak, my own country, one that I share with 60 million others and with an even greater number whose roots are here but who now live overseas. And what a land it is, full of myth and legend, brimming with archaeological treasures and set down in a rich treasury of historical documents. For its new scientific content, Saxons, Vikings, and Celts relies primarily on the results of a systematic DNA survey that I and my research team in Oxford University have undertaken over the last ten years, a survey involving more than 10,000 volunteers from every part of the Isles. The results, explained in the book, exceeded even my most optimistic expectations of the power of genetics to make a real contribution to our knowledge of a small region. In Saxons, Vikings, and Celts, I approach the DNA evidence in the same way as others who write about the past using their different specialties, material artifacts, written documents, human remains, and so on. The most important thing about the genetic evidence is that it is entirely independent of these other sources. It does not rely on them. However, to use genetics most effectively to fill in any picture of the past, it helps immensely to have this abundance of other evidence, and I use this resource throughout the book. Nevertheless, when you have read Saxons, Vikings, and Celts, I hope you will agree that from now on genetics can take its proper place alongside history and archaeology as one of the principal lenses through which to view the past.